Welcome concrete fans. In this video, we're gonna talk about different modes of reinforced concrete beam failure and also a special focus on this mystical point called the balanced reinforcement ratio. In this video, we're gonna learn that the amount of reinforcing you have in your cross section actually has a huge impact on the ductility of your beam. Ductility, what was that again? That's the ability for your beam to bend but not break, and that's very important. That's a very important for safety and also for helping people get out of your structure and providing warning that bad things are gonna happen. This is very, very, very important, and sadly, the reinforced concrete industry, our forefathers and foremothers, they've made kind of some weird choices. They're not very good marketers, and they've given some of these things bad names. I'm gonna try to teach you how to understand what they were talking about. Let's 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 start going. So we've got a couple situations down here. One of them is that the concrete's gonna fail before the steel yields. And that is actually bad for ductility. Steel is ductile. Steel can bend and flex and stretch. Concrete just kind of explodes and crushes. That's okay. There's lots of other good things about concrete. But that's one of the benefits of using them together. We want the steel to yield before the concrete's going to going to crush. This is called over reinforced or compression controlled. Over reinforced. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound like a good thing? It's not. It's awful. It's scary. You don't want it. It's bad. Then there's another situation. The steel can yield right as the concrete fails. The steel just very, very begins to yield as the concrete starts to fail. This is also bad, bad, not good, not good. We don't want this. And this is called in the concrete world, balanced reinforcing. Balanced, isn't balance good? I mean, don't you hear all kinds of, you wanna balance diet, right? You wanna have a balanced life. You wanna have balance with the force. <sighs> right? Balanced reinforcing, that's bad. You don't want that. What you want is you want your steel to yield before your concrete fails. You want your steel to yield and give and bend and allow you to have lots and lots of structural resiliency, okay? This is very good, and this is called under-reinforced. I mean, what a horrible name. The good thing is called under reinforced. It sounds dangerous. It sounds like it's not safe. I know, but it's 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 right. It's it's very safe. It's it's also called tension controlled, which is better, but a lot of folks still call it under reinforced and that is good. You want that. There's also a situation where the steel is going to fracture right as the concrete cracks. That's also bad. That's called minimum amount of reinforcement, and we'll talk about that coming up in a video. Also, in order to normalize the amount of steel in your cross-section, they have something called the tension reinforcement ratio, or rho. This is AS, the area of steel, divided by BD. B is the width of your girder, and D is the distance from the compression fiber to the centroid of your tension steel. This kind of gives you the percentage of the cross-section that's made out of steel and it's very, very helpful coming up. So let's talk about balance reinforcement and let's talk about how to find it because if you can find the balance reinforcement, then any more steel than that is over reinforced and that's bad. And any less steel than that is under reinforced and that's good, but we'll talk about it. You don't wanna be right on the edge. That's coming up. In theory, this approach sounds like a great idea. It sounds balanced, right? It seems like our concrete and steel are perfectly optimized. Wrong, totally wrong. This design will cause structures to fail suddenly and have no ductility. Ugh, that sounds awful. Remember, if I'm loading a structure and this is like curvature or how bent it is, we want a lot of this. We want it to be able to bend and give. But if the concrete's gonna fail before the steel yields or right as the steel yields, you're gonna get this. You don't want this, you want this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a cross section. We're gonna divide, we're, we're going to, to derive this balanced reinforcement. This is a beam. This is the area of steel. This is B, this is D, this is the strain. 
This is the strain in the steel and compression, or what we assume for a Whitney stress block, 0.003. And this is the strain in the steel at yield, Fy divided by the modules of steel. This dimension is C, and now we're going to derive the stress block. This is Fy, stress is at Fy, and this is, the, this is the stress block. This is the Whitney stress block. God bless Charles Whitney. 0.85 times F prime C is the top dimension. This dimension is beta 1 times C. Beta 1 times C. And then we're going to find the resultants. This is the, if I have to take the stress multiplied by the area, this is the force I get. The easy one is just the AS times FY, the area of steel multiplied by the yield strength of steel. Okay, that goes at the bottom. And this is the resultant for that compression block. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the block and then multiply by the width because we're trying to find the volume, the volume of the block. So we take dimension 1, which is 0.85 times F prime C. We take dimension 2, which is beta 1 times C. Then we take dimension 3, which is the width of the beam. We multiply all those bam together and smack, we got the resultants. Now, we can use similar triangles to get this equation. This is just a strain in the concrete divided by C. Yep, 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 that and that. This is the strain in the steel divided by this dimension, D minus C. Yep, 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 yep. Now I'm going to simplify. I'm going to put in 0.003 here. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to do a little bit of more algebra, and I get this to be equation number one. Now, equation number two down here at the bottom. Okay, how did I get that? Well, that comes from this. That comes from these resultants. These have to be equal to one another. Why do they have to be equal? Because the summation of forces in the x direction have to be zero when things aren't moving and we're civil engineers. Our stuff doesn't move. If it moves, it's bad. Ah. So we know ASFY has to be equal to all this stuff up there at the top. ASFY has to be equal to all the stuff from the resultant at the top. Now we're going to substitute 1 into 2 on the next page. We're almost there. We're closing in. Here we got that ASFY. That's everything on the right. We plugged into the other equation. Oh, Now we're going to divide both sides by B and D. Why would we do this? So we can get rho, of course. We can make this equal to rho. How beautiful. We also are going to divide by epsilon s. We're going to recombobulate this equation right here, okay, and make it look something like this. That's just 29,000, 29,000 KSI. That is the modulus of steel. It looks something like that. Now we're going to divide both sides by Fy, okay, and we're going to simplify rows equal to AS times BD, and we're going to call this whole thing equal to row balance because that is this mythical place right when the concrete fails in compression, right when the steel starts to yield. But it's not what we want. It's not ductile. So we find this big equation and let's just pick some numbers just to get a feel for 60 KSI steel, which is very, very common. And F prime C, that's the compressive strength of concrete of 4,000 PSI, which is very, very common. We get a beta one of 0.85, talked about beta one before. Plug into this equation and we get 0.0285. Multiply this by 100, that means 2.85%. When I get a row balance of 2.85% or one 2.85% of my cross section is made up of reinforcing steel. That is the danger zone. That is something you should just have in your mind, something you have for feel that you don't want that much steel inside your concrete. And you don't want to be anywhere near there. This is like the cliff, the cliff of doom. You want to be away from it. Okay, we'll talk about that coming up. If we have more steel than this, then we'll say it's over-reinforced. If we have less steel, we say it's under-reinforced. But we don't even want to be close. We want to be way under-reinforced. It used to be that ACI used to force our row to be less than 0.75 times row balance. It used to, and you will see all kinds of people that will use this for design, okay? I don't believe in it. I don't think it's that useful. It's okay, but I think there's a better approach. 
But we, we do this again to ensure we get ductility. But now we're going to use a different way. We're going to control it with our safety factor. On to the next video. But first, I want to say a big thanks. I want to say a big thanks to my, my watchers. Please like the videos, comment the videos, subscribe the videos. Also, a big thanks to Honnell, to Izzy, to Kelly. Thank you for being great fans of mine. Keep rocking.